treatment in ACL tibial avulsion fractures is anatomical reduction of the displaced fragment and achieving continuity of the ACL fibers. This gives us a stable knee with no impingement on knee extension. Accurate reduction and rigid fixation also allow for early post-operative mobilization, prevent joint stiffness, and re-establish pre-operative range of motion. Surgical intervention is frequently required in McKeever types 2, 3, and 4 ACL avulsion fractures and includes open and arthroscopic methods. We describe an arthroscopic double pulley technique for ACL avulsion fractures in this paper. Ours was a prospective study with a sample size of 28. We included all isolated ACL avulsion fractures, ACL avulsion fractures with associated meniscal injuries, and ACL avulsion fractures with grade 1 MCL, LCL, and PCL ligament injuries. All multiligamentous knee injuries higher than grade 1, polytrauma patients, and medically moribund patients were excluded from our study. Patients were followed up for a period of one year. Statistical analysis was done by the student T-test. Lysome knee scoring system, IKDC scoring system, was used for the pre-op and post-op analysis of our patients. Operative steps. Anteromedial and anterolateral portals are created. Fracture hematoma cleared, and fracture crater is debrided. Reduction is attempted. There are times when the intermeniscal ligament may interpose between the fracture fragments, as can be seen in the picture. In these cases, the interposi interposition has to be dislodged and then fracture is achieved. Two tibial tunnels are created on either sides of the ACL using a tibial jig. Sutures are passed through the substance of the ACL, as can be seen in the video demonstrated. Excuse me, the timer is not working. Double pulley. I'm sorry. You go ahead. You go ahead. Cinch knots are created, as can be seen in the video. Two such cinch knots are created. The sutures are then pulled out of the tibial tunnel to create the double pulley. The double pulley then pulls down on the fracture fragment, creating even compression on the fracture. The sutures are then tied over the anterior cortex of the tibia. Our study had a total of 28 patients, of which 20 were f males and 8 were female. 54% of our injuries were sports-related, 25% were domestic, and 21% were vehicular accidents. Almost 50% of our patients were overweight. Injury to surgery time was 13 days. Our study showed good results with an improvement in the lysome score from 27.36 in the pre-operative period to 84.25 in the post-operative period. There was an improvement in the IKDC score from 10 to 91 in the post-operative period. 80% of our patients had no post-operative complications, 18% patients developed arthrofibrosis, and 4% patients developed reflex sympathetic dystrophy. We compared our study with other studies in uh, similar studies in literature. Table number one here shows, that a com that shows a comparison between the pre-operative and post-operative lysome scores for various methods of ACL tibial avulsion fracture fixations. Improvement in the scores for our study are comparable to those of other techniques. Table two shows that the risk of development of arthrofibrosis as a post-operative complication is maximum in open reduction internal fixation where there is extensive soft tissue damage and minimum with the double pulley technique. Table 3 indicates that when any metallic implants such as CC screws or K wires are used, subsequent surgery will be required to remove them as they may cause irritation, which is not required for the double pulley technique. Table number 4 indicates that the risk of post-operative fracture displacement is least with the double pulley technique due to even distribution of compressive forces across the fracture fragment. To conclude, the double pulley dual tunnel technique offers a novel method of fixation with even tensioning of the ACL in tibial avulsion fractures.